that again. Happy Resurrection Sunday. He lives. He lives. Yes, Christ Jesus. He lives. And I hope that you're rejoicing like I'm rejoicing because we have the blessed hope. I hope it's in Jesus. And he got up from the grave on that third day morning. And that's why we celebrate. I'm so happy today. And I pray that before we end this day, that you will be touched as well. Go to your services and, and worship the Lord and thank Him for what He did for all of mankind on Calvary. Let us go to God in prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you for allowing us to see another day, another day of celebration, Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Lord, we just thank you. We mourn and get a little sad about the way things happen. But Lord, you did all of that so that we may have life and more abundantly in you. Lord, we pray for all the sick, those who can't get out, the shut in, those who are in the convalescent or in the hospital, and Lord, even the mental institutions. Lord, we pray for those who are incarcerated. Lord, you know, you know that there's freedom wherever you are. When the sun set free, you, Lord, is truly free indeed. Lord, we pray for those who are at war. And even pray, Lord, for those wars that's been talked about. Lord, we know that you're still in control. Lord, just continue to help us to grow and not get weary and not faint. Because, Lord, we know that you've got us in the palm of your hand. And we're not to be anxious, fearful of anything because we have you who is almighty and all in control. Lord, we pray that some soul may be delivered. Some soul may be healed. Some soul may be strengthened. And Lord, we pray that it reach the masses, whether you're in your car, on your phone, in your house. Lord, let your word go forth. And Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. So, Lord, help me to decrease and, Lord, you increase so I can put your word out. It's in your name, Jesus, that I pray and ask of all these things. Amen. As I said again, this is a happy occasion. You know, I love Christmas, as I said before, on another occasion. But Easter... It's the most important to me. Jesus came as the gift. And as I said a couple of weeks back, Easter allows us to see the fullness of the gift. Because he came so that he can give us more abundant life. Our lesson today is about the pastoral lamb lives. What is a pastoral lamb? And I, I had to look through something myself. It is a lamb that was slain for the Passover so that it can be served. Isn't that something? A slain lamb for the Passover to be served. And we know that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was that lamb who was slain. But you know what? He was slain so that we can overlook, once we give him our, our lives, the things that we went through, pass over. He became the Passover sacrifice for us so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. He was that lamb that took all of our sins on himself at Calvary so that we may have life eternal. The passage of our lesson will be taken from Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Matthew, the 28th chapter, verses 1 through 10. The pastoral lamb 
lives. Yes, he does. He died, but he rose again on that third day morning with all power in his hand. And we're going to uh, do a little background, and then we're going to go into the lesson. And this is very important. And I just want to say, women, we women, we are important in the Word of God, okay? Don't feel like you're second fiddle. God loves you just as much. And I tell you, when we read this lesson, and after we've read this lesson, we're going to see how the Lord Jesus blessed them by saying these words. Women, Jesus paid attention to women, included them, and acknowledged their place in the kingdom. At the risk of censor from a male-orientated society, Jesus talked to women, responded to their touch, healed them, received their emotional and financial support, and used them as main characters in his stories. Luke mentioned a group of women who traveled with Jesus as he journeyed from town to town. Luke 8 chapter 1 through 3. Among them were Mary of Magdala, what would you call Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Susanna. These women provided financial support for Jesus and the 12 apostles. Women were the first at the tomb after the resurrection. As such, they were the first to broadcast Jesus' victory over death. Luke 23, 55 through 24. I'm sorry. Luke 23, 55 and then 24, 11. Matthew Mark, Luke, and John are called attention to the loyal women who participated in Jesus' Galilean ministry and followed him all the way to the cross and the grave. The New Testament brings a distinct picture of women into focus. Jesus and later Paul elevated the social status of women since they are equally participant in the kingdom of God. Equally participant in the kingdom of God. They as well as each man are urged to use their responsibility as well as their freedom to find their place in the body of Christ. The spirit of freedom and love in Christ belong to women as well as to men. And aren't you glad that God doesn't have a respect of person? That he can use anybody, even a little baby, if he feels so. He can use anybody. So don't feel like, oh, I'm a woman. Oh, I'm not educated enough. Oh, I can't speak. I can't do like this. I can't do like that. Quit using those excuses. Let God govern your life. He won't let you fall. And he knows exactly what your purpose for life. Let him rule it. And don't put stigmas on your life saying that you can't or you're not capable. God can use, if he used a donkey, he can use you. So be encouraged. And God doesn't marginalize group. He includes all of us. Women witnesses witness Jesus' crucifixion up close. Women who had known his healing power gathered at his feet in his finest and final hour, motivated by gratitude, courage, and love. These women did not run away and hide or deny Christ. And we know that the disciples, they scattered. 
We know that Judas, he betrayed him. Peter denied him. And the rest of them kind of like just went their way. They, they ran. But the women stayed close. They did not run away, hide, or deny Christ in spite of his public humiliation and gross teeth execution. These women wanted to be identified with the crucified Messiah. They were not ashamed. Although they could not trade places with him or take him down, these women were not watching out of helplessness or coincidence. They were witness to his crucifixion in preparation for their purpose of delivering the message of eternal faith that the Messiah has had risen. After Jesus died, his body was taken by the disciples and entombed. However, resonating among the religious leader was Jesus' prophecy that he would be raised in three days. To ensure that the disciples did not come back to steal the body and then fabricate a story of resurrection, a large boulder was set upon the tomb and soldiers were assigned to stand guard. They did not perceive even then his power. We're going to begin Matthew 28, 1 until verse 8 but we're going to take it a little bit at a time but this first segment of the lesson is women at the tomb and it reads like this Matthew 28 1 in the end of the Sabbath as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. They went to visit the grave where Jesus was. And behold, there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from the heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers, the ones that were standing at, at the guard, they did shake and became as dead men, knocked them out. And the angels, and the angel answered and said unto the women, to the women now, Fear not, don't be scared. Ye, fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said, as he said, come and see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples' word. Now, I want to say, the women were the first to know of the resurrected Messiah. And it filled their heart with joy. They remembered what he had told them. And this is what it was saying that early on that Sunday morning, at the new day, the break of the day, as it was dawning, Mary, Magdalene, and the other Mary. They went out to the tomb to visit. They, they still was in mourning and they just wanted to go and see where the Lord's body was laying. And 
they remembered what he had said, but they they still was in a state of kind of, I, I just can't believe that this is happening. So they wanted to go and look just to be near his remains. And suddenly, suddenly now, there was a great earthquake. Can you imagine that? Suddenly now, now it's, it's calm. But all of a sudden, an earthquake came. And it said, For the angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face shone like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow and the ones that was that they had the the uh, uh Caiaphas and the high priest that they had hired to be in front of it they fell out they were so scared and seeing all this brightness this heavenly being until they got scared and they fell out knocked them out because they were afraid to see such thing happen. Then the angel spoke to the women. Said, don't be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He is risen from the dead just as he said he would. Come and see where his body was lying. Come and see. Come come on in here. And I want you to see that he's not here. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And he is going ahead of them to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. That's what the angel is just reaffirming what Jesus said that in three days... The temple is going to be torn down, but in three days it's going to raise back up. He was talking about himself. And these women, they had been really looking. If you read that chapter, it's, it's, it's very enlightening. Because you see, they were there when he was going through all that. They didn't scatter. They stayed right close. They didn't have much of a say. But they were right there. They were not afraid. They went there. Actually, they was going there to anoint him. They were not afraid. They wanted them to know that I'm part of him. I'm part of this Jesus movement. And even Joseph Arimathea, who was a disciple too, but he was wealthy. His tomb was where Jesus was laid. He gave Jesus his tomb. He had just purchased it or had it hewn out. And he had never, it had never been used. But he begged for the body of Jesus from the high priest them. And they let him have it. And he pulled him down from that cross, wrapped him in linen, and took his body to be entombed. The women still were there. They was over against him across looking at him during the whole process. So they never left all of this when it was going on. They saw, they heard, they saw, and they heard. So they was going back because they still wanted to touch him again. And you know how we do when our loved ones or someone that we know uh, go away we go to the funeral home or whatever, and it's not that we know that they're going to respond back to it, but we just want to see them for the last time. Want to touch them, what's, what's, what's left of them for the last time. And they wanted to do this for their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But they got a shock that morning. Well, not really a shock, because it had already been foretold to them. But like I said, they was in a kind of a daze of all this stuff that had happened to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And they was mourning because they saw how he suffered 
on that cross. You know that they ever evidently had some sleepless night. They didn't rest. That's why they were so up so early so they could go. But an angel, an earthquake happened. And I know that the angel, Jesus, it didn't take the stone. They didn't have to, that angel didn't have to roll that stone away so Jesus could get out. He was already out. But that stone was rolled away so that they could see that he was not there. So that we could know that no power on earth can tie our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ down. And it can't tie you down either if you are in Christ. Because we're more than conquerors. The stone did not seal him in. He got out. The angel, <laughs> and that's God. The angel rolled back that stone. Because see, even the women on their way, they was wearing it because they had the spices and things to anoint him. It doesn't say this in this, but it's read that chapter. They had <coughs> the spices, excuse me, to anoint him. But they had a concern. They said, who's going to roll the stone away? And these are women. That stone was big, a boulder. And it was heavy. And they was like, we got all this, but who's going to roll the stone away? But Jesus, the angel, got there. The stone had already been rolled away. And that's how our God is. When we think that we, Lord, how are we going to do this? How are we going to conquer this? And when it's time for that thing to come to pass, it's already done. And all you can say is, look at God. You made it possible. You made a way. You rolled that stone that was in my life away. And you showed it to me. That it was you who did it. Said when the angel rolled that stone away, he sat on it. He was just waiting for him to show up. He was there sitting on that stone, waiting for Mary and the other Mary to come. And when they came, they, he said, Don't be afraid. Don't be scared of me. He didn't say that. To the guards. They just looked at him and got scared. There is no fear. Love casts out fear. These ladies, yeah, they were a little afraid because this was a beautiful being that they the fall this brightness, but they wasn't afraid to the point that they fell out. He had to assure them that everything is okay. He said, Don't be afraid. I know why you're here. You're looking for Jesus. He's not here. You're looking for your Savior, but He's not here. And I came to tell you that He's not here, but I came to reaffirm what He wants you to do. Go and tell His disciples that He's not here. And that if they want to see me, meet me in Galilee. He's not here. He's risen. Just like he said he would. So we just thank God for that. And the second segment of our lesson. Jesus appears to the women. And that's taken from, lesson, from verses 9 and 10 of that same chapter. This is not a long uh, Listen, but it has a lot of meat in it. Now it says, And as they went to tell his disciples, Behold, Jesus met them. They were on their way, but Jesus met them, saying, All hell, stop. And they came and held him by the feet. And worshipped him. Then Jesus said unto them. Be not afraid. Go tell. 
my brethren, that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. Man, and they went. Jesus met them and greeted them on their way down. And can you imagine? You so excited, you get ready to run and tell it, and then Jesus said, "Wait, hey." Don't be afraid. And when they saw him, they were so excited. They didn't go and hug right up in here. They went to his feet, showing humility. They worshiped his feet. Even, you know, we, we got where one took the hair and, and, and the tears wet his feet. And she dried his feet with her hair. And then same thing, they worship him at his feet. They didn't hug like we hug today, like up here or around the waist. They fell prostrate and they worship at his feet, showing that you are God. You are the Son of God. You are the Christ. You are the Messiah. You are the Lamb of God. And they worship him. And Jesus confirms again what the angel told him to do. Go and tell. But listen what he says. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid. Go and tell my brethren. Now, when I saw that word brethren, I said, Wow. He didn't say, Go tell my friends. Go tell my disciples. Go tell my servants. He said, go tell my brethren. You know why he did that? To show them that you were included in the kingdom building. You were joint heir. Heir to Christ and joint heir to God and joint heir with me. In heaven, you'll be my brethren. We're family. We'll be this and that. Uh, but we will always acknowledge him because he's the one who paid the price. He's the one that brought us back. He's the one responsible for us getting to heaven. Being with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He paid it. He made it possible. But he loved us so that he didn't say, go tell my disciples, go tell my friends, go tell my servants. But he said, go tell my brethren to meet me in Galilee. Although you ran away, you scattered, you denied, I still love you. And I forgive you. You still my family. My true family. And I'm not going to exclude you. But I'm going to include you. Because we're family. He said even in the 17th chapter of St. John. He told his father when he prayed to his father. He said those that you've given me. I haven't lost any. But the son of prediction. Which was Judas Iscariot. But I still have them still in the palm of my hand. And he had Judas too, but Judas did not want to be a part of that. That was his choice. But God, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, did not exclude. And I thank God, because we all have done some things have come short of his glory. But he still said, come on back. I'm still here. You're still my family. I still love you. Today, actually, a few hours earlier, I was with a family member who lost their mother. And my cousin got up and he 
said a few things at his mother's casket. And he said, I don't care how bad I was. He said, and I was a bad little boy. Still bad. He said, but my mother always loved me. He said, <coughs> she wouldn't take up for me and my wrongness. He said, she knew what I would do and what I wouldn't do. She said, and he, he is, I love him. He said that if somebody tried to accuse him of stealing or something like that, she would tell him, no, not my son. He wouldn't do that. He said, and I wouldn't. And he said, but if somebody came to her and said, he hit me because he got mad because I was hurting one of his loved ones. She said, now that I believe. I know he's capable of that. She knew him. She knew what he was capable of. And she never stopped loving him. Jesus is the same way. He knows us. He knows what we're capable of doing. He knows our frame. And he never stopped loving us. When we give him our life, we're saying, Lord, I'm not perfect yet. But I want you to mold and to make me. I will make mistakes. But I want to come quickly before the throne of grace and ask for your forgiveness. But Lord, I am just sure that you will never leave me nor forsake me. Another occasion, talking about this brethren and this close relationship, this family bond. I heard a lady say, well, if we can just make it in, I, 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 I pray that we make it in. And I listened to her for a little bit and I said, I'm going to make it in. I said, I have the blessed assurance that it's not by my works. Not how many times I pray for a person or go to church or even uh, give a person something. You know, the 13th chapter of Corinthians is tells you all those things that even if you give yourself in death if you don't have love for your fellow man and most of all first of all if you don't have love for Lord Savior Jesus Christ God the Father and God the Holy Spirit you have no part of them but because we gave Christ our life and we said, thank you, Lord Jesus, for making that ultimate sacrifice on Calvary. And you took away our sin debt that was owed to us. You took that on yourself. I thank you. I love you. I worship you. I can't wait to be with you where we can embrace each other so I can fall at your feet and worship you as well. He never gave up on his disciples. And he elevated them even before they met him in Galilee. He said, tell my brethren, they meet me there. He said the same thing to us. Meet me there, my sister. Meet me there, my brother. And I thank God that he included me, that he chose me. Even when I wouldn't have chosen myself, he chose me. And I thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that he didn't give up on me. Do you have the blessed assurance of saying, that Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. No, I haven't been to heaven yet that I can recall. 
but I have a foretaste every once in a while. I see the sunset or the or the or the, or the, the morning sun rising and I say, Lord, heaven's got to be far more beautiful than this. And this is beautiful, but I can't wait to see heaven. He gives us glimpses of the foretaste of glory divine. And this, what I'm saying, that he said, brethren, he says that I'm heir of salvation. You know why? I was purchased of God. I've been, you've been, if you have been born of the Spirit, and we've been washed in the Lamb's blood. This is my story. This is my song. I'm going to praise my Savior all the day long. Yes, this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior all the day long. I'm so happy. For Resurrection Day. And I just don't celebrate it. On Easter. But celebrate it every day. Every day should be a Resurrection Day. Every day should be a day. Where you thank God. For being inside of you. Thank God that a body that was once dead. Dead in sin. But now it lives because he lives. We can face tomorrow because he lives. We can have a better day because he lives. We can love even when we're not love because we have the blessed assurance that Jesus is mine and I am his. I thank God for Resurrection Sunday but I thank him most of all for resurrecting my sin sick soul. I have the blessed assurance that he's mine. And he gives us glimpses of what we have to look forward to. That when we get to heaven, when we see Jesus face to face, when we behold him, we're going to shout the victory and rejoice and we won't be afraid and we'll see his beauty and I believe we'll fall at his feet flat stretched out because we'll realize and we'll see with our own eyes with our spirit that lamb that was slain for us. That made it possible. For us. To be with him. Forever and ever and ever. I don't know about you. But I can't wait to see him. I had to be like that song. Shirley Caesar used to say. Hold my mule. Hold me down now. Because sometimes you feel like you can just go right now. But we want the Lord to be proud. We want to work in his vineyard for as long as he tells us to. We want to be productive for his glory. Because he's done so much for us. I pray that you've gotten something out of this lesson. I have. And like I said, it wasn't a long one. But it had some good meat in it. I thank God. Y'all know I get choked up. In the word of God. Because I get so excited. Because he's done so much for me. And I tell a little bit every now and then. When I get the opportunity. But if I begin to really talk about it. This will be an everlasting streaming. <laughs> and I don't want to bore you. But let us celebrate. What God has done. For us. 
we won't be friends, disciples, but we'll be brothers and sisters. We'll be heir to God and joint heirs to Christ. He did that for us. Let's do something for him. Give him your life. If you don't know him for the free pardon of your sin, he's already paid for it. Just receive it. If you're in a backslidden way, repent. Get up, dust yourself off, and get back out there in the field. If you low or depressed, get into the Word more. Have more quality time with Christ, and that depression will leave you. And I'm not telling you something that I read. I know. Been there, done that. Could have a t-shirt, but I don't want it. Because I'm going to rejoice and be glad in this day. Whatever you need, God's got it. God's got it. So receive it and believe it. And things will work out for you. I love you, but I listen for next week. If it's God's will, it's taken from John, and it's called Freedom in Christ Jesus. Amen. Freedom in Christ Jesus, and it's taken from John, St. John, the 8th chapter, verses 31 to 38. Freedom in Christ Jesus. Be blessed, my brother, and be blessed, my sister. Thank God for what he's done. Thank God for what he's going to do. And oh, for the joy that fills my soul. Something happened. And now I know that he touched me. He touched you. And I thank God for loving us also unconditionally and he's patiently waiting so let us celebrate what he did for us on Calvary and like I said the next time if it's God's will I'll see you then I love you have a beautiful Easter in the Lord bye bye